guys, I'm gonna give you some quick tips on how to shoot a recurve with no sights. The first thing you want to really get down is the way you grip the bow. A lot of people assume you just squeeze the handle and you just shoot that way, but what happens when you do that is when you squeeze, you're actually torquing the bow. Not only that, you are putting your forearm closer to the string, which is why a lot of people get slapped with the string. Um, what you wanna do is pretend like you are pushing someone away. And you wanna take your uh, this pad right here on your thumb and push it straight into the bow handle, just like that. Then you simply wanna rest your index finger on the front of the bow. You don't need any other fingers on there. And what that does is it allows the bow to naturally set how it's supposed to in balance. Um, that will help you a lot. Now, there's a few different ways to grab the string. I shoot directly off the shelf. And the way I hold the string, it depends on what I'm doing. So if I shoot instinctively with both my eyes open and, and no sight reference, I shoot Mediterranean. So that is or split finger. That's where the index finger goes on top of the knock. Um, when I shoot a stationary target and I use the arrow as a reference, as a sight, I shoot three under. That way I can get it closer to my eye. Very important thing when you are um, anchoring is to anchor in the same place every time. So for me, I anchor the side of my index finger on my cheekbone my thumb knuckle up under my jawbone every time I shoot. Because if you have a different anchor point for each shot, that's elevating the string or you're dropping it down, that's gonna change the trajectory of the arrow. Um, then you gotta find a reference point. If you're going to use the arrow, um, the tip of the arrow, you can use it to sort of line up where you wanna hit but it's not gonna hit exactly where you put the tip of the arrow. So you have to learn to adjust to that. And you will learn by repetition where it's gonna hit. For different distances, obviously you're gonna have to find out where to hold that reference point. So from 30 yards, I'm not gonna put the tip of the arrow in the middle of the target. I'm probably gonna put the tip of the arrow up toward the top of the target. the top of the target in order to hit the middle. So it just takes repetition and it's something that you kind of learn on your own, but you do want to have the correct form. Whenever you draw the bow back, do not use your biceps. Use your back muscles. So what I do, I push my hand straight into the bow handle first, then I'm going to shoot three under because I'm going to shoot my target and I'm going to pull straight back with my back muscles. I'm gonna keep this elbow high. When I get back here, I want my forearm back here to be straight with my front, my bow arm. So it'll look like this. Bring it up high. You don't have to point the bow up in the air. If you're doing that, your draw weight's probably too high. So, straight back. and then your release. I like to get the string right onto my fingertips. And when I release the string, I it's a very fluid movement. Um, I don't let the string roll off my fingers anymore. And I kind of just let the bow do what it does. But you, you wanna get your fingers out of the way. I'll even bring my hand back after I shoot. Whenever you're shooting a recurve with a rest, or off of the shelf, um, you wanna make sure you have these three fletchings. Notice that one of them's black. I want that main fletching to be on the outside of the bow. So if the shelf is on this side, you want it to be, you want the black fletching to be out this way. Um, what that does is you've got these two veins. When the arrow shoots, this bottom fletching is able to slide right through there. 
So always remember that. And that's how you shoot a recurve bow. Quick something I wanted to share with everybody. A tip that I learned when you shoot at these targets, this is that new uh, Morel target. But you notice everything we've been trained to shoot center mass. Man, if you're trying to go into the deer season, man, make a habit of holding right here, right here on the top of the heart. And typically when you get into deer season, these deer's gonna duck a little bit. So I always want to hold low on a deer. Come up the leg right in the armpit. And typically when they duck just a little bit, you're gonna hit a little high. So hold in the middle of the body, you're gonna shoot over most of your deer. If you don't believe me, just watch a lot of these videos and think back on the deer that you can't believe that you missed. You shot over them. That's because even just with the quiet bows, they squat just a little. Hold low. So I'm going to teach you guys the most accurate way to sight in your bow and this method I actually learned from Levi Morgan so check it out. So you want to put electrical tape on your target and you want it to be level. I actually take a level and make sure it's level. Then I go back to 20 yards or 25 or whatever distance you'd like and then I will aim at this line and if I hit low I will adjust my sight until I smoke this line every time and then the same thing for here so I'll aim at the vertical line but this is where I adjust my left and right. And so say I hit over here, then I'll adjust my sight until I hit perfectly on this line. And when you hit perfectly up and down on this line and perfectly left and right on this line, your bow will be sighted in absolutely perfectly. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a follow here on TikTok. For those of you who are just starting out, do not clutch your bow like this. This is no, no, no. And here's why. Very simple fight explanation. You draw, guess what's gonna happen? You have it clutched so tight, it's either gonna catch on your arm guard or it's gonna string slap the heck out of you. Actually, if it catches, it's gonna hurt too. But what you wanna do is make sure your grip is that push-pull tension. Hold your bow up, make sure your elbow's up when you draw back to your angle point. Have that push, like, see how my fingers are barely, you might even see my pinky out in some videos because what you're gonna ultimately want to do is you're gonna push, you wanna lean into it just a little bit, but most of your weight's gonna be on your back foot. And you have this, but you wanna grip, because when you release, you don't want the bow to go flying. So, I hope this helps you guys, and yeah. One of the targets I recommend for starting off is a tennis ball, empty water bottle, or an empty can. Please keep in mind that I am self-taught, so I'm sharing with y'all what I have found to be helpful. When you're throwing something up in the air, I have found it's easier to have your feet slightly shift a little bit more towards the target. You're going to be leaning slightly back. The goal is to make sure most of your weight's in the back foot. Throw up, and you're going to see me raise my bow, start spotting, and then release. because of the way the bow comes down. Try it, you'll notice. And uh, the second part is I did try to throw the targets closer than I would normally, um, just so you could see the full range of motions from start to finish. So, hope it helps. I might delete this, I don't know. What's up guys, I'm the Aero Sniper, and I'm gonna show you how to shoot a traditional bow. First, you wanna grip the bow properly. Don't squeeze the handle as this torques the bow. The way that you actually want to do it is put your hand out like you're telling someone to stop and put the bow handle on your thumb pad. Then relax your fingers. Now, let's talk about anchor points. When you draw the bow back, you want to have the same anchor point on your face every time. If you draw back and it's up here, then the next time it's down here, that is going to change the trajectory of the arrow. So for me, I put the side of my hand right here under my cheekbone. Now, to properly draw the bow back, you want to incorporate the back muscles. So as you're drawing back, you wanna feel your back doing most of the work. Get your shoulders up here. Squeeze your back. When you get around, like your hand gets close to your face, 
So when you really want to start bringing that string into your face, using your back to draw the bow. And that's going to give you a steadier hold on the bow. Now let's talk about the release. So once you've gripped the bow handle correctly and you've drawn the bow back to your anchor position, when you release, you want to follow through with the shot. And what I mean is you want to actually go back. So keep that back tension. When you release the string, your hand should go back and it should almost be like you're painting the side of your face with your hand. Now, once you've put all that together, this is what it should look like. If you're scared to extend your bow arm at full draw for fear of slapping it with the string, here are three things that you can do to prevent that from happening. The first being your stance. Many people stand at a 90 degree angle to the target, but if you turn your feet to a 45 degree angle, it's going to give you an open triangle from those three points and give your arm much more clearance from the string. The second thing is your hand grip. Now, many people reach out and just grab the bow like this. The reason that's wrong is because your wrist can torque all of those different ways, so you want to lock your wrist up and back just like that. It's more consistent, repeatable, and it's going to give you more clearance from your arm and the string. The third thing is your front shoulder. Many people, as they draw back, lean back and actually pop their front shoulder up, so stay standing up straight and keep that front shoulder down. Now, if it lifts like this, it's incorrect and is going to put your arm very close to the string. Hopefully those three things help. So I'm gonna go over a common mistake a lot of people are making, they don't even realize they're making it. And that is vein to face contact causing facial pressure. So if you have any pressure on your arrow, it'll put the same pressure onto the string and cause an error in your shot. Everybody varies a little bit differently, especially if you have facial hair like a beard, clean shaving, maybe your face is a little more plump or a little lean, you know, with all those variabilities, that'll vary how far down the vein should actually be fletched from the knock. When I go full draw and I anchor, you can see how this vein is touching my face. And you're like, oh, that's not gonna be a big deal. But watch, if I have this right here, now I push that arrow slightly off center, which now when that arrow, when that bow is released, that the string has to go straight down the cams and so when that arrow is pushed in a little bit it has to correct that error in the the in the shot which will cause me to hit to the left or hit to the right depending if you're left or right handed so what you guys want to make sure you do is that you get total facial clearance from your knot so no matter what you're shooting you want to do the same thing and that is test how far down you need this to be from the, the base of the, or the throat of the knock to where it needs to be fletched so you don't get any facial contact. And there you can see that arrow is in front of my face. So I, I have to stick my chin out to hit it. So right there, I have total clearance, which will allow me to execute a perfect shot without being interfered with the veins. So for me, it's an inch and a quarter from the throat of the knock. A lot of people don't know that their face touching a fletching can actually cause their bow to be not as accurate as it can be. It seems obvious, but a lot of you guys don't realize that this is causing your bow to be not as accurate as you could be. It, this is a good test. Take your arrow, draw back, see if you're getting facial contact. If you are, you may want to reconsider how you're fletching your stuff and move it down the shaft just a little bit. You know, you want it as far back on the arrow as possible, but not to the point to where it's actually having any contact with your face. And I promise you that'll improve your shooting.